As you're just starting to learn about computer science, a lot of the time that you spend is focused on actually writing the software. It turns out that the act of writing the software is often a very small part of the total task. The full life cycle of how you develop software is broken into multiple stages, of which the coding itself, which you call implementation, is just one. The first thing you have to do is what's often referred to as analysis. The analysis process is literally just figuring out what it is that you're going to write. You need to think about what problem you're solving. Uh, how is this software going to act? What is the user going to, to do? What should be the, the various actions that they can accomplish with the software? That's your first step. You can't solve a problem until you actually know what the problem is. Once you know what the problem is, then you can start working on the idea of how you're going to solve it. That's the process of design. Now an interesting thing to note here is that when you start with analysis, you're not thinking at all about creating software. You're not thinking about programming. There's no aspects of code that go into the analysis phase. You should be very much detached from that because you should be thinking about the interaction of the software with outside entities, including human users. The design phase, however, does include aspects of code. You're thinking about how you're going to set up the code, what the pieces of the code are going to be, and how they're going to interact with, with one another. You're generally not thinking about individual lines of code, though. You're thinking about it at the higher level. In the case of an object-oriented language, you are thinking about what classes you're going to break your problem into, possibly some of the major methods that those classes are going to have, what type of data they need to store, and then how all the pieces are going to fit together to complete the analysis, that you, the analysis that you've already done. After you've done those two steps, then you can work on implementation. This is where you actually write the code. And yes, early on you focus a lot on this, and part of the reason for that is because writing software, writing programs, you're effectively learning a new language. And so there's a steep learning curve. It's easy to think that this is the main part of, of your task, but in reality it's just one of many steps, and often it's not the most time consuming. So after you've written your implementation, you need to check to make sure that it works. And this is the testing stage or the debugging stage. This is another one that you've probably had to deal with already because, as you know, when you write the software, there's a very good chance that your first cut was not correct. You, know, you put in some mistake, possibly many mistakes, and then you have to go through and track them down. The bigger the software is, the longer this process can take. In fact, this can be a very large part of the time spent in developing a piece of software. After a company has decided that a piece of software is sufficiently debugged, they've done enough testing, they feel reasonably confident about it, they will deploy it and let it, you know, so it goes out into the world and they have people using it. And if all goes well, they wind up entering the maintenance phase. Maintenance can occur in several different ways. One thing would be you didn't find any bugs in your software, but your customers did, and they want them fixed. And so they will tell you that there are things that have gone wrong, and during the maintenance phase you get to fix them. Also, it's possible that your users decide they want extra features. There are things that they would like to have added to the software. And so maintenance programming also involves adding features to existing software. Now, there are different approaches to how you're going to organize your coding of these steps. Uh, the field of software engineering deals with the, the different ways that you will go about this whole process. At this point in your computer science education, we're not going to worry too much about the details of the process, but we do want to make sure that you think about them. And we do not have the ability to become maintenance programmers in a certain way but you should spend some time on the first four elements of this. You do need to think about the problems that you're solving. Yes, typically your instructors will actually give you descriptions of your problems that will be reasonably uh, comprehensive, and so they've done a lot of the analysis for you, 
but there will often be holes that you have to fill in. Before you actually start writing code, you should sit down and think about the design. You should think about the parts that go into it to actually make the implementation. And then, after you've done that, you can do the implementing. I often tell my students that just sitting down and starting to type is a very bad idea because you will do it wrong. Actually spending some time doing analysis and design before you start writing code, even at this introductory level, can save you a lot of time in the long run and it saves you time here in this fourth step. Because if you just sit down and start hammering out code, odds are you do it wrong in a lot of different ways. You will mess up a lot of different aspects of it, and then you have to spend the time debugging all the errors that you put in. Spending some time thinking about how the software should be put together will allow you to do the implementation quicker, and generally will also allow you to have a much shorter debugging phase.